Thank you for your patience, everybody. Welcome to the hot seat. My name is Ace Guzman. What's going on, everybody? Good evening. It's Friday, and you got me, Coach Ace, because my other half is not able to make it tonight. So this is why we are having a little late start to our hot seat. But we're going to go ahead and answer your questions tonight. No worries. It's okay. You got Ace. Sometimes it's Ace by my, you know, by herself, or it's Rich by himself. You just never know what happens on the hot seat, right? So let me get some lighting over here because I got a little dim light. There we go. Much better. Ah, okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So who do we have here on the live? Let's take a look here. Who is on the live? Let me go to Facebook, and then we are going to stream right inside the Internet Marketing Pros Facebook group. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's see here. Who do we have? Colleen, hello, Colleen. Good to see you. Patty, hello, Patty. Sandy, good to see you as well. Welcome to the hot seat. Hey, you guys, I'm telling you, I had gotten, I'm gonna open up with this. I made a Facebook post and I didn't know what direction it was gonna go, but it was a comic book strip and it literally depicted about like the things that can happen when you're on a Zoom. <laughs> You know, when you're building a business, working from home, doing online marketing, and then what happens is you're doing things behind the camera, but you forget to turn the camera off. <laughs> Anybody ever been any weird experiences that you like to share <laughs> on the hot seat where you've been on a webinar and people are like in the Hollywood squares and they left their camera on thinking that they turned it off and they've done something very embarrassing and everybody sees it? <laughs> I'm telling you, I see some stuff. <laughs> I see some stuff. So I thought that post was classic. And colleagues over here seconding uh, my my uh, my comment here and said that was hilarious. It totally was. But you see, this is what I was talking about all this time on hot seat. I always talk about you know being creative with your content. You know, sometimes you want to ruffle some feathers. Sometimes you want to make people laugh, right? Sometimes you even want to pull those strings to the point you make people want to cry, right? Because that's what gives you the human to human interaction. And Facebook loves this stuff. They want that kind of a thing. They want to see you human and interacting. They don't want you using bots all the time. Now, I have nothing against bots. And we're going to talk a little bit about that too. If you guys have questions about AI, because we do get a lot about chat GBT. But the thing is, don't rely on the bots to do the conversations with you because then what happens is you're not learning anything. You're just going to rely on some damn robot to go ahead and just speak for you on your behalf. And then what have you learned? How did you build relationship or that connection that you need, right? Am I right? With your audience, you see? So you definitely want to be human. So I love to, to say certain things that's like outlandish. You know, I got a wild sense of humor. You can ask Rich. I told him, Rich, when you die, you're going to be in the casket smiling. <laughs> he, he, he laughed all his life being married to me, right? <laughs> That's what's going to end up happening. Okay. Any hoosies? Let's see. Richard Osmer just joined the live here. Welcome, Richard. And uh, says, praise the Lord. Yes, praise him. God is beautiful. This is Richard from Monroe, Michigan. Sounds like you just got on. Where is Rich at? So let me tell y'all why Rich cannot be here tonight. Rich actually woke me up three o'clock in the morning. And what had happened was he woke up with a terrible toothache. And unfortunately, it was just miserable, agonizing pain. So we had to take him to, you know, emergency dentistry today. And they took a look and he has a bit of an infection. So Rich is going to sit this one out. So he's just chilling on the couch, you know, just trying to deal with the pain. They gave him some antibiotics. So he's just got to kind of got to work it through until he can see the dentist again. They got to get that affection out. So unfortunately, that's what happened. So I'm covering for Rich today, but, you know, prayers for Rich. Think about him, thoughts and prayers that he feels better. You know, a toothache is not something to actually try to do the hot seat with. He could not even open his mouth. So I feel so bad for my honey, but. You know, I'm taking care of him and he's in the other room relaxing and he's on drugs. <laughs> he needs to be, <laughs> right? He needs to be. That pain is like, woo, honey, toothaches. No, no, you can have it. Oh gosh. Well, we all got to go through it one way or another, right? Okay. Yeah, you did that before, right? It's like, you've been through that, right? <laughs> oh goodness, yes. So let's go ahead and answer your questions. We got some questions over here. 
and um any questions you guys are thinking about let me know and oh my goodness let's see thank you so much yes keep them in your prayers thank you richard god bless you thank you so much uh, for having rich in your prayers absolutely so share this on your timeline share this in your facebook group and speaking of facebook groups you got any questions about facebook group marketing let me know let me know absolutely let me know what you'd like to do with your facebook group that you haven't done yet or maybe there's something that you're stuck on and you haven't quite figured it out right you haven't quite figured it out so let me go over here, take a look at the comments. Go ahead, guys, post your questions on the hot seat. We are live right now on Facebook, and we are actually going live inside the Internet Marketing Pros Facebook group. A lot of great members there. We got new members that just joined. Welcome, new members. Hi, this is Raymond. Raymond, all the way from Ohio. Raymond, Raymond says, Ace and Rich, I'm looking to build my downline. Do I have to join all those mailers, or is there a more strategic approach to growing my downline effectively? Very good question. Very good question. Thanks for opening up with that question. <laughs> okay, so Raymond, here's the thing. Um, you don't have to join. There's no like you have to join all these mailers, meaning like there's mailer groups and there's places that you can go online and you can you know, get on everybody's and subscribe on their list. So that way, you know, you could get on people's email lists and, you know, what's going to happen when you do that, you're going to have an inbox full of junk. Okay. You can get so confused about what to do for your online marketing. And you might even fall into like these buy me traps where you see such great copy that you'll want to buy some stuff. Right. So this is where the discipline comes in, Raymond, where if you want to create what is called a swipe file, okay, if you want to create a swipe file and you want to study other copywriters and get good at your own email marketing, then I would say, yes, join a couple of those guys, but don't join every single marketer and leader that is in your uh, company. Don't do that because what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of confusion going on. You know, they're marketing their uh, offers as well. And they have their own thing that they're doing. Then you might just get stuck in trying to buy their stuff. But if you just want to build a swipe on, you just want to stop study their ad copy, or you want to study their subject lines, you want to study their body copy, then I would create what is called a separate Gmail account. If you can do that, you know, it's like, we call it the dummy account, right? It's only for copywriters. And what you do is you build this thing out over time. And you start finding these subscribed, uh, you start finding these people who do copywriting, like really great, like Daniel Throssell. I can throw some names out for you. Let me tell you, you know, John Benson, I subscribe to those dudes because they're badass. They're awesome copywriters. They're not affiliate marketers like us. Like, you know, they just do copywriting. That's all they do is all copywriting. And I want to study from them because they actually mentored under the likes of Dan Kennedy. So I want to be able to study these guys. They're great. So I would jump in and I would subscribe to those guys. And I have a separate email account just for me, Ace Guzman. And when I go in there, I study every single thing that they do. And then I think to myself, oh, I have inspiration. I got ideas now. You know, you got like that swipe file that you can go through those, those emails and go, this is what I'm going to send my list today. And I'm going to create something similar. Okay. So as far as like, what's a strategic approach to growing your downline effectively, effective follow-up. In order to grow a downline effectively, you got to get great at following up. Somebody says, heck yeah, right? Follow up, buyer follow up is what I call it. And I talked about this on stage at a live event multiple times. Buyer follow up is essential. If you, if you don't remember me saying this in, in, um, at the live event, you remember when you met me in person, follow up is essential, okay? Within the first 24 hours, if you can possibly make a reach out connection, phone call, email, chat message, whatever you can do to get in touch with that new buyer, get connected with them within the first 24 hours, send them a welcome email, whatever you got to do to get in touch with them and bring them into your world. This is going to be effective follow up because then they feel like they can reach out and touch someone that is real. They don't have to feel like, oh, I got to send a support ticket every single time. I got a question and this kind of thing. No, you're their enroller. You're their enroller, Raymond. So Raymond, what I'm telling you that's a more strategic approach is the first 24 hours, try to make it a, a, a priority to reach out to your new buyer however way you can. If you're in an affiliate program that provides when that person has bought their email, their phone number, okay? or their Facebook account uh, username, 
by all means, you should be out there going to look for them. Okay. Yes. You have to do some active marketing. You have to go and actively find your buyer. And you know what, if they're unreachable on Facebook, then the next route would be send them an email, a, a, a email from your private email account. If you have a domain name hosting and you also have a private email account, don't send it from Gmail because it's not going to work. Um, Gmail is changing a lot now lately. So that might end up in spam. So try to send them an email from your private email account, have it go out. And then from there, if all else fails, pick up the phone and call them if you're comfortable with it, right? But this is a business. And if you want to build your downline effectively, you also got to do things that duplicate and you got to do things that people can actually model after you. So if you're picking up the phone, your team members are going to pick up the phone. If you're sending out emails, your team members are going to send out emails, right? If you're reaching out to people on Facebook or utilizing some other method to reach out to your buyers, your team members are going to do the same. So Raymond, I hope that answers your question. I gave you more than enough information there to help really get you on the right track to how to build your downline. Awesome. Thank you so much. Next question. Let's take a look over here. What we got? Let's look. Next question is from Joyce. How does one come up with a name for their lead magnet, like an ebook or a guide? Oh, gosh, I love these questions tonight. Okay. Joyce, how are you, darling? Okay. How do you come up with a name for your lead magnet, like an ebook or a guide? Well, depending on what is the guide going to be about, right? It's a how-to or if it's a step-by-step, -step, you know, guide, um, you know, what I would do now that we have AI is go to ChatGBT, you know, go to ChatGBT and ask ChatGBT to help you. Now, it may sound funny the way I'm saying that, but it's because when you've used ChatGBT as much as I have, you're going to really learn to get acquainted with putting in the proper inputs and get the best, the best best generated responses. Let me tell you, I've used ChatGPT to come up with lead magnet ideas. I even used it to actually create titles. So if you say, hey, ChatGPT, and this is what you're typing, hey, ChatGPT, I have a lead magnet. I need a name. What do you need from me? Give it a question mark. Watch what happens. ChatGPT is going to say, well, what's your content about? What is, what is it that you're talking about? How are you solving people's problems? right? What is the gist? What is your call to action? And let me come up with a name for it, right? It's going to give you like a list of things that you want to provide so that the AI can go, I need some more information from you. But now you know what to provide ChatGBT, and then it will create your lead magnet title for your book or for your guide. Isn't that awesome? I'm so glad that AI came up with this because like here we are back in the day, like we're talking like 12 years ago, and we were sitting there twiddling our thumbs and praying like, oh, I hope this name works out. And it sounds like some sob, sad name that you think that you're going to make sales with because the name is so catchy and it didn't work. <laughs> it takes you a while to come up with lead magnet names, doesn't it? Now with AI, put in the right input, seconds later, you got some great stuff, right? So definitely use ChatGBT for that, right? So come up with the AI titles and it'll give you, let's say, Oh, I don't like that one. Then say, ChatGPT, give me five more. Put it to work. Put the AI to work and say, hey, give me five more. And then you pick which one you want for your lead magnet. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. So let me check a look here. Let's look over here. This is some real gold nuggets you are dropping. Thank you so much, Colleen. Hey, you know, like I said, if anybody has questions or challenges, you know, just this is the hot seat. Go ahead, you know, ask me your questions. Richard says, yes, I use ChatGPT all the time, but make sure you're using it right. Make sure you're using it right because I'm telling you over time, what's going to happen, Richard, is the AI is going to start mimicking you. It's going to start sounding like you, man. It's going to sound like your voice. And then every single time you create content, it's going to have your tone, your writer's tone. It's going to sound like you. It's going to have your verbiage. It's going to have your slang. It's going to have everything. It, it, it will just be you all of a sudden. And you're like, is this AI really doing this? Like, do I have a twin? You know, because if you save every single input and don't delete those, those things that show up on the left side of chat GBT, save them. You know what I do? Let me give you a tip. Here's a tip. When I have like a great input, okay, a prompt is what we call it, the input prompt. And I'm like, damn, that was a good one. And I got, and I got to keep coming back to it over and over again to keep building it out. What I do is I go to um, uh, Google and I type in emojis and I want to like get the emojis. So I'll get the library for the emojis encyclopedia. 
and I'll grab one of those emojis and I'll put it and copy and paste it right inside the edited name of the file for the prompt. Now I got stars going down on the side. I'm like, oh, those are my favorites. <laughs> and I do that. Yeah, that's what makes things so much easier. I'm like, didn't I create that? And I don't want it to go scrolling through it because ChatGPT doesn't make it away. Hey, ChatGPT, you listening? Make it a way for us to search for our old inputs. That would be so cool, you know? But there is no way right now to search for your inputs. So you kind of got to scroll through everything. So what I do as a tip is I grab the emoji and I copy and paste the emoji to the left side in order to bookmark it, to make it look like it's a save file bookmark. So I'll use an emoji to order, put my, put my inputs in order, all my prompts. That's what I do. So you guys give it a try, do that. Patty says it will, especially if you tell it to use your writer's tone when writing with ChatGPT. Absolutely. It will definitely, it will definitely be like you. Just don't delete those inputs, you know, save them, back them up. That's what I like to do. Like once I have like a good 20 to 30 inputs, you know, just in case, just in case you never know, you know, computers are like this, they shut down and you lose all your stuff, right? So with ChatGPT, it's like cloud-based. So it saves everything you put in there unless you deliberately say, I'm going to delete this. ChatGPT is not going to delete your inputs. All of your prompts are going to be saved somewhere there. But if you want to do a backup, use Google Drive. Yeah, use Google Drive, create a document, throw them all into a spreadsheet. Bam, back it up. <laughs> back it up, yes. Any other questions? Delroy. Hey, Delroy. He says it is a great brainstorming tool. Absolutely. It's it's great at brainstorming, but you got to give something to kick it off. You know how like when you're like doing a backyard fire, you know, and you're about to roast some s'mores and what do you need to do? You need to get some kindling going, right? Well, that's what you do with ChatGBT is you got to get the kindling going. You got to give it something because it's not just going to whip stuff up out of the, out of, you know, the sky, you know, you want to be able to just say, hey, ChatGBT, I need you to do X, Y, Z for me. You know, how can we do that? How can we work together? Right. I like to work together with ChatGPT. So that's how I communicate with it. Uh, Google Drive is great. It is. It is. It's going to save yourself a lot of space because you're going to have a lot of props over time. When you think about it, like a year's worth and ChatGPT is not even that old yet. You know, a lot of people are using it, you know, and it has its pros and cons. You know, I like ChatGPT 3, guys, just being real. I like ChatGPT 3 versus 4, okay? I like 3 versus 4. I don't know why. I'm just, I'm used to it, you know? So I'm going to stay with 3 as long as I can. <laughs> okay. Come on, guys. What else we got? Any other questions? Taylor. All right. Taylor from Michigan. Hello, Taylor. Taylor says, I have so many questions. I bet you do. <laughs> uh, Ace, I started selling for a network marketing program last year. I started a Facebook group. Good for you. And I started marketing in my community. I started and maintaining a TikTok profile. And generally, I'm trying to get the word out about my business. Cue up the crickets. Here's what's happening. I noticed groups have over 10,000 members. And with, within TikTok and Facebook, I just cannot seem to generate any sort of interest. What can I do, Ace, to drive traffic to my Facebook group? Okay. All right. That's a lot. All right. Um, so let me, let me, let me take your, you know, tail, I'm gonna put you in a hot seat. Let me, let me take this apart. Okay. First part piece of your question is. You know, number one, you've identified what type of, um, you know, online, make money online type program you're doing. You're doing a network marketing program. So I'm assuming you have some kind of like physical product you're marketing. Could be health and wellness, could be cleaning products, whatever, right? We don't know. But here's what you really want to solve as your problem. You want to use your Facebook group, right? And you want to know how to grow your Facebook group from TikTok. Is that what you're telling me? So you're using TikTok and you're using Facebook and you're trying to connect the two and you're wondering how these people got over 10,000 members. Okay, don't compare yourself to anybody who has 10,000 members. Guys, please do not do the comparison syndrome. Don't fall into that trap. I don't even have 10,000 members, but I got a good quality number of members who, who read my stuff, watch my stuff, subscribe to my stuff, right? You know, i rather have those kind of people than to have 10,000 folks that don't do nothing, right? I don't let nobody, you know, freeload in my in my online prime real estate <laughs> you know so if you want to build your um your facebook group there's a couple things you can do okay 
I'm going to have you remember this saying. You must tell, and I'm going to leave it with the blank. You must tell, leave it with the blank. Here's how you fill in the blank. Every single time you put something on your Facebook profile, on your timeline, you must tell your audience to follow you somewhere else. So if you're posting something, you say, follow me on TikTok, that's what you need to put into the blank. You must tell your audience, tell them what to do. You see, if you don't tell people what to do, they're not going to do it. If you don't tell them, here's a call to action down below, click this below, they're not going to do it. You can't assume that they're going to do it because they don't know you, Taylor. Okay. So in order for you to li literally connect with your audience and build your memberships, your members, the best way to do is you must tell them what to do. So you must tell them, join me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel, right? You must tell them what to do. That's the best way that you're going to be able to build out your members, your, your influence by telling them what to do. How many TikTok videos, Taylor, have you watched? And every single time in every single TikTok video, those influencers are not running away. They're not closing out their videos without telling you to go like this, right? They're like, don't forget, click the link in my bio. They must tell you what to do because they can't assume that you're going to do something, you know, without them telling you what to do. So they're either saying, give me some likes, drop me some hearts, right? Share my, my video on TikTok. Well, the same thing goes with Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. They must tell you what to do. So now you're in the different boat. You're the influencer now. You want to get up to 10,000 members. You want to grow your thing. You got to be consistent. And consistency is key to building out your own community. If you're not consistent, what do you think is going to happen? They're not going to know about you. So the reason why you're hearing crickets is because you're not consistent and you don't know pretty much how to do a call to action or possibly you haven't been taught. So now, since you came here on the hot seat and brought this amazing question to me, okay, I'm going to answer the best way I know how from my experience, because that's the only way I can answer these questions is from experience, okay? And I'll tell you what works and what doesn't. I'm going to say to you, be consistent. You must tell your audience what you want them to do. That's how you're going to be able to do it. And how do you get people interested? Create creative posts. Make it fun, okay? Make a graphic or something to say, hey, we're trying to draw our, grow our group and we're running a contest and give something away. Gamify it. Say, hey, we're giving out a free checklist for whatever it is that you're helping with your network marketing program. Connect it with the network marketing program. Have something from the network marketing program that's con congruent that either solves a pain, problem, or challenge and use that as what? As a Facebook group membership qualification uh, tool. That's what I do. That's what I do, right? And I'm not in network marketing. I'm in affiliate marketing, but I do similarly the same thing. When somebody joins the Internet Marketing Pros, right? Shout out to you guys. The Internet Marketing Pros, they have to answer three questions inside the Facebook group, right? And it's important that they answer all three questions or they're not coming in. You don't want them to come in. You want to make sure you don't just let any single person into your group. What could happen? You could have people spamming in that group. And then what happens? They end up messing with your members, okay? And it doesn't give them a good feel. It doesn't feel like a safe place for them to be like you told them in the first place, okay? Make sure that you actually have something that is free, but at the same time, you can generate that person's email address and put them on your own list. Now you can definitely invite them to your TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and anything you want because you got your own list. And when you have your own list, you control your business, all right? I think that's good. If you need anything else, Taylor, just let me know. <laughs> Delroy says, Comparison is the thief of joy. Mm, I love that. Yes, it is absolutely true. Richard says, good idea. Yeah, I got a Facebook business page. I can have my customer follow me on my Facebook business page. But even that, Richard, if you have a Facebook business page, one of the, the things that I did as a mistake when I had my Facebook fan page, which is AKA the Facebook business page, is posting the same exact content I put on my profile and I also put it in my Facebook page when not realizing that not two, both pages are alike because that is specifically for paid advertising to get those sponsored ads out there. So you got to give them more meat in a, fa in a Facebook fan page because it's more about business and likability, but also at the same time, they're actually getting something that is more of value than it is for your profile. 
So what I did was because I didn't know, save face, my mentor said, just do it on your profile. And I just been doing it ever since I've been using my profile, not my fan page. And it's been working for me. Right. So you find what works for you. You test things out and you stick to what works. Exactly. Uh, me too. I'm still using the free version to chat GBT. Good. Good. I'm glad. I'm very, very glad that you are. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you, Taylor, for your questions. Let's see. Da, 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 da. No, not yet. Anybody else? Aha. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Let's see. Ace, which link should I provide to my solo ad vendor to ensure that I get the most accurate tracking and conversions? Okay, Sarah. For solo ads, this is the language that we use. Solo ads is for net, for affiliate marketers, okay? Affiliate marketers use this as an alternative to, uh, instead of doing expensive paid traffic marketing methods, they wanna use solo ads for that niche, which is affiliate marketing. So you go to solo ads to build out your list. Um, and if you get a sale, great, woohoo, bonus, right? So how do you keep track? What link do you give them? First of all, let me tell you which link not to give them, okay? When you're running solo ads, don't give the link to the sales page, okay? That's not what that's for, okay? Because there's no way to track it. You have to use either your own created custom capture page that you created. There's page builders out there like ClickFunnels, okay? Or you could use the one that we always recommend, which is our funnel builder. That's only $25 a month compared to ClickFunnels. And, uh, you know, people use it all the time. It's a drag and drop and it's easier to use. And you can easily, real fast, create your own capture pages and then you can add your own tracking to it, okay? Now, what I mean by tracking is you need a third-party website, okay? So there's a couple of them out there. I use, um, I use several, but actually, I've over the years, I've changed. So when I first started with Affiliate Marketing with Rich, we used Cl uh, Click Magic. That was one of them. Click Magic was very good at the time. It was affordable, you know, before inflation, <laughs> right? And you would use Click Magic and you would track every single thing that you do with solo ads, right? And there was a way that you could actually just buy your domain name right in Click Magic. And I think they still do this, but, you know, it, Click Magic's changed lately. So now people are looking for alternatives. So now we don't use Click Magic anymore. anymore. We use QLiker. QLiker is a lot more better. It's a little bit more, but it's worth it because you get more data. And that's the thing that I like about doing my tracking when I'm running solo ad traffic, you know, I'm tracking everything. So now I use QLiker the same way I use it with ClickMagic. So I highly recommend if you want, I'll put the link in here. I have an affiliate with uh, QLiker. So every time somebody uses my QLiker affiliate link or any affiliate link, um, according to the new FTC guidelines, we must tell people that we do earn a commission for our links when they're clicked on, Okay and somebody buys something through that. We don't get paid for the click. We get paid when the person actually puts their credit card and purchases something just to be transparent. So if you're interested in QLiker, we can refer you to QLiker. It would be under our affiliate link and I can put it right here for you. Not a problem. And you can open up an account and learn how to track your, uh, your capture pages and look at your opt-in rate. And you can do it that way with your solo ad vendor. So give your solo ad vendor the capture page, but make sure that you use the third-party site like QLiker or, or ClickMagic to be able to create the tracking link first, okay, and generate that link with the vendor's name. So that way you know which vendor you bought it from and how many clicks you bought it with. Then when that person converts, you'll see the conversion, you'll see all the data that you need. Colleen says, I love the transparency. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, you know, times are changing and we have to adapt. That's what entrepreneurs do. We are digital marketers. So uh, a while ago, I was going through my inbox and I saw this new thing uh, from the FTC and I couldn't believe it. The FTC wants all affiliate marketers and network marketers to be um, on their sites or on their web pages and say that they get paid as an affiliate, that's, that they don't want the customers to go searching on their bio and everything. They say it's got to be blatant out there. So every single time you put an affiliate link for now on, guys, you got to put something on for FTC disclaimer. You got to put it out there that you get paid. Yep. And you got to do it. <laughs> Anything on the public? All right, that's, that's what's got to be done. Okay. Any other questions? Richard, let's see. Uh, I got an autoresponder. I wonder is a landing page uh, will be the best 
to capture people's email addresses and send them to my offer landing page. Capture page is the same. It's just the, the terminology. Don't forget when I do uh, word of the day Wednesdays, pay attention. <laughs> okay. I'm not just going like this and going, ah, you know, <laughs> I want to make sure that you're actually learning from me sharing with you different definitions, terms, and, you know, descriptions of acronyms that are tossed around in the industry when it comes to internet marketing. There's so much to learn and not everybody has the time to learn it. So we try to make it entertaining as possible to learn different terms. So the term with digital marketing with landing page and capture page, they're similar. They're the same and it will capture the email address. Uh, what page should I use to capture people's email address and send them to my offer is all I want. Well, you got to have a capture page, but also don't forget your capture page must be connected with your autoresponder properly. And if you don't have certain things set up in the background with your autoresponder, your deliverability is going to tank and you're not, your sending rate's not going to be good. And you're not going to be able to deliver the value that you really want to give to your subscribers as they requested. Don't forget, they're giving you permission to email them. So make sure that you're not being this, you know, person that's automatically trying to sell them on the first meetup. You got to build that relationship with them and make sure you have a series of emails called an indoctrination series to work with them through, okay, over time. And this is a daily consistent thing. You got to be every day. Your Wednesday, your Wednesday videos are great. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I tell you, I came up with that idea by watching, um, I don't know if everybody has seen Sesame Street growing up as a kid. I'm revealing my age, right? I'm 43. So I grew up in the 80s. I'm, I'm an 80s baby. And the thing is, um, I love Sesame Street, you know, at the time when it was, you know, for us, you know, growing up as kids, value, learning how to read, write, you know, and do math and things. And, you know, I remember how they had, you know, the, the Muppets would actually talk about different letters and terms. And I said, how awesome would it be for me to do this without having to get up and dress up in costume or anything? I could just be myself as I am the leader, the marketer, you know, the influencer and be able to teach internet marketing this way and do one word or acronym every Wednesday, once a week. And I said, let's give it a go. And I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And now people actually look forward to seeing it. They're like, what's the new word of the day? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, now I, now I actually put it on Pinterest. So now people on Pinterest were asking for it. So give people what they want versus what they need, right? That's what me and Rich always teach when we coach our students. And so we were telling um, people on Pinterest, you can watch us. You must tell them, you can watch these full videos inside our TikTok and go to our TikTok account. And uh, that gives them a call to action to do that. And you could also see it here on Pinterest where it says Pinterest live. So they, they we do Pinterest videos and Pinterest lives. Yeah. I've seen Sesame Street when I was little. Yeah, you kind of miss it, don't you? You do. It's not like the same anymore. <laughs> it's changed. Ace, this is Sean. What's the easiest way to build a following on Facebook? Well, I kind of touched a little bit on that, Sean, if you were here earlier and you heard about it, you know, for everybody to each his own, okay? I want you to be yourself. I've seen people who pretend to be something they're not. You gotta be really real. Like Colleen says, she loves the transparency. That is the new thing right now. People love it when you're real, okay? In all your flaws, be as humble as you need to be and share your actual experience and your journey. So when you're gonna grow your following, be consistent. That algorithm is sick. You need to make sure that you are on it every single day at the same time or around the same hours posting every single day. Because if you post once a day, you give people yesterday who didn't see your post the following day or the other day before time. I remember somebody was teaching me Facebook marketing 101 and they said to me, hey, you got to, you know, post three, four times a day, you know, and get that algorithm going. And I was just like, what? So I started doing that and I started noticing that my audience was not really into it and my numbers were really, really small. I said, why am I not getting any engagement? And why am I not seeing people reading my stuff? And why are people like leaving? You know, I had people actually unfriend me because they did not like the fact that I was posting three, four times a day. And if anybody's teaching you that shit, tell them to stop. <laughs> that stuff don't work. This is the new 2023 version. Once a day to the max, that's it. 
once a day to the max, especially on your profile. If you're running a Facebook ads and you're doing stuff like that, then you got two, two a day, okay? Because you're doing promotions and things like that with paid ads. But when it comes to your profile, it's a different algorithm, okay? So you got to keep that in mind. Now they got this new thing called turn your profile into a page. And that's what we did here at Ace and Rich. We actually were qualified. Facebook contacted us and said we could actually um, convert our profile into a page. And now we can see analytics on our Facebook profile. How cool is that? Wow. And all this time, <laughs> I don't have to worry about my fan page anymore. I got my Facebook page as my profile and my page with data. That is incredible. So Sean, I'm telling you, if, if you have enough of, a, of um, influence, create content that's worth reading, watching, and you know people can engage. And again, make sure you tell people what to do. So when you say what's the easiest way to build a following, it's not going to be easy because you're a total stranger, just like to everybody else. They don't know you. You don't know them. So how are you going to start adding your first couple of friends on your account? Start slow. Start slow. Five to 10. Add five to 10 new people. Where are you going to find them? Well, you got to know your niche. You got to hang out where they hang out. You got to be places where they read. You got to be around where they're actually watching stuff. And that's what I did when I first started. When there was a webinar, I was there. When there was a Facebook Live by an influencer in my industry, especially with personal development, like Les Brown, Brian Tracy, um, who was the other one? <laughs> Anthony Robbins, I'm trying to think of all these people. I would hang out where they would hang out and I would meet and connect with people who are in the thread and be a part of, this, of the experience. And be like, hey, you know, would you mind if I add you as a friend? They're like, no, nah, go ahead. Adding as a friend, it just takes a couple of seconds. It's not wrong. I don't have to sell them on the first meet, right? So you're just trying to build up your numbers. Then go ahead and just start handing, hanging out and connecting with people that are on Facebook, that are in your community. Facebook groups is another way to do it. Make sure you're joining communities that are not public. Stay away from those. Those public ones, they, they are horrible. What, think about the stuff that you've seen in the public Facebook group. Have you ever seen a public Facebook group on Facebook ever that ever gave you great value? No, you find spam. You find a lot of people posting stuff about crypto, investing, and you know they got something better than the sliced bread. They're selling their products. Like these guys are not marketers, okay? They're a bunch of desperate nobodies. And it's unfortunate because they're doing it all wrong. They're throwing spaghetti on the wall, hoping that it sticks. That's gonna be my next post coming up. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking about throwing spaghetti on the wall and hoping it sticks and turn that into a great learning lesson, right? So when you join Facebook groups, these are the Facebook groups you want to join. Make sure you join, Sean, Facebook groups that you either paid for to be a part of, like private membership groups. I run one right now. It's called the Inner Circle, okay? But there's other Facebook groups out there. They're masterminds. Or maybe sometimes when you purchase products to learn something, they'll add you to the Facebook group attached to that course. And then you're a part of a community that are all like-minded people. So there's some great people right there that you could connect with. That's the whole premise of being in the Facebook group. Remember, those people don't belong to the admin. The admin doesn't own them, okay? So if somebody says to you, well, stay out of my backyard, like I heard one time my, <laughs> my network marketing sponsor told me one time, stay out of my backyard. And I said, yeah, okay, I'm not even in your backyard. You know what I mean? Can I help it if people like me better than you and people come to me because I give them more value versus your leadership? <laughs> what can I do, right? You drop the ball, guess who's going to pick it up? Me. Hey. They want to come to me. I'm not stealing nobody. I'm not cross recruiting. What, what do you want me to do, right? If you ain't doing your part, maybe it's something on your end that you need to fix, okay? So when it comes to building your following, I've given you enough information, man, that you could just start running wild and you could actually start building out your strategy day by day, Facebook group, being a part of live streams that have influencers, people that are influential, like Les Brown, Brian Tracy, or, you know, Anthony Robbins, you know, Grant Cardone, okay? These guys, you know, they got some huge followings and they're constantly doing lives. Why are you not there? Make yourself known, you know? Be in there, participate, be a part of the experience. You never know who you're going to meet. When you go to a live event, Sean, and you go to a live workshop or a conference for like a couple of days out of state, what do you think is going to happen when you go to that live event? You think you're not going to build new relationships and have a couple of friends added onto your Facebook account from there? That's what's going to happen, right? You're going to meet some people and you might even meet your own clients. That's what can happen. <laughs> okay, there you go. Thanks, Sean. Get out of here. <laughs> go, go knock them dead, man. 
and keep me posted. Okay, let's see. Uh, I like Ernie and Bert from Sesame Street. Yeah, Rich's favorite Sesame Street character, and he actually met him. It's funny, he, he met him when he was in Florida, is the Count. <laughs> he loves the Count. And lo and behold, he was going to a live event and he was transferring. He ended up into in the Florida airport and there was Count all fully dressed from Sesame Street. And he took a picture with him and it's on his wall. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I wonder what should I name my landing page for somebody to join my free business opportunity? Okay. If you see how you posted that question to me? Take that same exact question, copy it, paste it into chat GBT. Watch what it's going to tell you. But one more thing you got to also in include. Before you put that question, you got to tell chat GBT who you are in the industry. So if you're marketing something for free, it's your business opportunity. What are you? Are you a network marketer marketing a network marketing program? Or are you an affiliate marketer marketing an affiliate program or service? That's what you got to say when you open up the dialogue with chat GBT and then go ahead and write out your statement that you just asked me on the hot seat and I'm directing you to go ahead and watch what ChatGPT could create for you. It's gonna give you a lot of suggestions, but you gotta put those inputs right. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Do that right now, Richard, yeah. If you post too much, people will tune you out. They will, they don't like it. They don't like it, people need time. Not a lot of people live on Facebook, guys. You know, you, you're lucky you have your phones by you and your digital devices, but people still got jobs. They got to work. They're not on their phone constantly. They got to work. So you're not going to see them at the hours you're posting when you're home not working and they're working or vice versa, right? Sharon Curtis, hello, doll. How are you? Hey, Ace. Good to see you. <laughs> Brian Bearden, hey, Brian, how are you? He says, and more crypto. I know, I know. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, that's a good idea, Richard said, is run a private Facebook group. Sounds like I can make money with paid Facebook groups. How do you start a paid Facebook group? Build your value first. Make sure you sell your products, okay? Provide, um, provide exceptional customer service and you'll be able to sell and make money in Facebook groups. I kid you not. That's how I did it. I had to learn to be a master of selling someone else's offer before I created my own. Like there was no way I was going to be able to charge $10,000, $20,000 per client for coaching until I started becoming a master myself, Richard, of what I had to do. So you need to build up your credibility first, man, because nobody knows you, nobody likes you, nobody trusts you. And I'm not saying that as an offense. I'm just telling you like it is. That's how they see you. And people have this perception of you. So you got to come out there and you got to clean up your act. You got to say, okay, I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. So how are you here to help and serve? You're going to provide value. What pains, problems, and challenges are your customers dealing with, your ideal customers, the ones that haven't even bought from you yet? These are your prospects. These are your potential leads. You got to talk to them first as if they are part of the business right now. We act as if. That is the mindset. That is the mindset that you must have. And once you build up that mindset, you're going to start having in your mindset, you're going to have the results and the results are going to reflect in your commissions. And when you have the results and they reflect in your commissions, hello, people are going to start, start taking notice of your screenshots and your screenshots are going to be used on social media. And you're going to start sharing your screenshots on social media and people are going to start taking notice for you. And then they're going to wait for you to train them. And then they're going to wait for you to give them an offer. And when that offer is so irresistible that they decided to say, hey, Richard, you know what? I want to learn what you learn. I want to pay you, man. I want to pay you to mentor me. I want you to coach me. That's when you earn your stake, your stripes. And you go, damn, I did it. All right, cool. Anybody else? Mindset question. Hello, Ace. My wife and I are both brand new to affiliate marketing. We feel a bit impatient. Don't I know what that feels like? Uh, what mindset should we adopt to and stay motivated and focused, especially when we haven't made a second sale yet? Oh, my goodness. This is good. Okay. So first of all, I love the fact that you and your wife are working together in the business. This is like being rich. You know, we were boyfriend and girlfriend for a very, very long time until we finally got engaged. We were building this out from the very beginning through all the trials and tribulations and challenges and setbacks and deaths in the family. I mean, it was life happened, <laughs> right? Not to us, but for us. That's the mindset. So 
let me share with you something about the journey. Okay. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. When it comes to doing affiliate marketing for the first time, it will feel in, you know, overwhelming and you will get impatient, especially when you got your first taste for your first sale. I know what it's like. They're like, whoa, I made my first sale. I can't wait to get the second one. So this is where you are right now in your journey. You're like, damn, when am I going to get the second one? Okay. The mindset is very important. So how do you do this? Read. Pick up a book that's related to self-growth as an entrepreneur. Find these books. These books are all over, okay? If you can't find a book, I can definitely help you. A list of books that I've read or listened to audio-wise, okay, me and Rich, and you can start on your journey and literally spend 30 minutes for 30 days in these books, do the 30, 30, 30 challenge and start diving into these books and start working on this because you got to be sharp. Abraham Lincoln said it best when he said, you know, I rather be working hard, okay, on this, sharpening my ax. How do you cut the tallest tree in, in, in the uh, forest, right? By sharpening your ax and now cut the whole damn forest, right? So you spend more time sharpening the ax, not just chopping at the tree. So sharpening your ax, which is your mindset, is the metaphor to actually refer to. And you can actually be listening to audios if you don't like to read a physical book, or you could actually read a physical book and start doing page by page, 10 pages. You can do 10 pages. Don't get lazy. If there's anything I can tell you is don't get lazy, read a book or listen to audios or watch some YouTube, you know, inspirational stuff to help you with your mindset. Jim Rome is the best. Okay. Even though he was the um, person in network marketing, my old mentor and coach, one of them, because I got a couple of coaches, this particular coach was with Jim Rome. Okay. And he spent a great deal of time and Jim told him, you got to be working harder on yourself than you do on your job. So make sure that you spend that time investing yourself in your intellectual capital, read a book, stick with the books that are good for you. One of the books that I would recommend is The Slight Edge. Since you're in an inpatient situation, think of it like a doctor prescription, like Ace is giving you a prescription. She says, go to Barnes and Nobles or Amazon and get a book, okay? And get the book that is The Slight Edge, and it's by Jeff Olson. And it's an incredible book and it's really about mindset and it's going to help you right where you are because you're waiting for that second sale and you don't know when it's going to come yet. It's not going to fall out of the sky. Whatever you did to get the first one, you better do it, rinse and repeat and get the second one. But that's how it works. Okay. And if you want to stay motivated, hold on to your why. Moments ago, before I started, I, I was coming on and I was contemplating, should Rich come out with me or not? Okay. I had my son with me. My son is autistic. And we were contemplating, he wanted to come out, but then he got stage fright and was like, I can't do it. I was like, all right, well, I appreciate you wanting to try, right? That's my why. So you want to talk about staying motivated? That's the reason why I do it. He's 17 right now. I've been building this business since that boy was a baby. Infant, newborn, okay? Newborn. My child was a newborn when I was building in this industry. That's my motivation. You better find your motivation and it better, be, it better be something to pull you forward on the days you don't feel like you want to stay focused, on the days you don't want to work, on the days you don't want to market, the days you don't want to call people, the days you don't want to write an email, whatever. You better hold on to that thing that holds you true. If it's your wife and she's the reason why, that why better be strong, let me tell you. I don't know your name, you're anonymous, but you know what? That's okay. I like anonymous questions. Okay, but you said you and your wife are doing this together, so you both need to hold yourselves accountable. And I will tell you this. Both of you are two different people. And I love when I coach couples, me and Rich love when we talk to couples, especially when they're doing affiliate marketing. Listen, you both have strengths and you both have weaknesses. If there's anything I can tell you that when we got to our first six figures in less than a year is we leverage off of each other's strengths. So if your wife is good at connecting with people and she's a people person and she loves to have conversations, have her do all the Facebook conversations and connections and posting and content marketing, right? And if you're good at tech, you're good at like connecting and taking care of the networking, you know, doing like the capture page designs and focusing on SEO and lead generation, then that's what you do. You focus on that. And that's how you both leverage off of each other's strengths when you work as a couple, husband and wife. All right. And you'll get your second sale. All right. Let's take a look over here. What we got? Guys, guys, any questions? Let me know. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, the questions are coming in. Oh my goodness, what time is it? Oh, five minutes over, that's okay. Let me see. I think I'm in an affiliate marketing program because I get people signed up. I think that's affiliate program, isn't it? Even in network marketing, you get people signed up. <laughs> what is the product or service you're selling? Okay, now Richard, you've been on this hot seat multiple, multiple times. I've heard you ask me questions about travel and you kept this consistent. So you see, I listen and I watch. So I, I pay attention to our audience. I know who our fans are and, and who are who are not our fans that are brand new. So if you're marketing travel rewards where people get vouchers and discounts on travel, that's that's you providing a service because you're the middleman. You're the affiliate, right? You get paid for pointing these guys to go get those vouchers, to get those deep, those those discounts. OK, so if that is that and you get an affiliate link, then, yes, you're an affiliate marketer. So that's what you would put into ChatGPT, that you're a affiliate with a travel program. Richard says that's something to think about is putting together a paid Facebook group doing what you say. Again, you can't start charging people right off the bat. Got to build your community, build your audience. I didn't start creating my own paid membership site, my company. Uh, you know, I have business going on. People pay me $97 a month to be a part of the inner circle community. Okay. And I have a free Facebook group to get it going. The first Facebook group start is internet, uh, internet marketing pros. And we build a lot of buzz around it. We give a lot of value for free. We give free uh, gifts and downloads. You can watch how I do it. If you join the internet marketing pros for free, you're going to see it's a private group, three questions to answer. Then when you join, you're going to get my welcome email. And in my welcome email, you're going to see um, a free gift. And I'm going to give you a resource to a free lead magnet. And you're going to actually opt in for it. And it's a free trial account. And you're going to get that, that uh, product, okay, and start using it. And you're going to get my follow-up that's going to be like every single day you're going to be on my list because you provided me your email. And when you're ready to join the inner circle, hey, that's on you. Um, okay. <laughs> Damn, this is good, right? Sharon Curtis says, can we build a business site on Facebook through ChatGBT? Can you build a business site on Facebook through ChatGBT? Listen, Sharon, you don't build websites on Facebook. Facebook is a social networking platform. It is like a live forum where you build and connect and have new relationships with new contacts, with people you never met, it is like one big life party, okay? You cannot build websites. The only time you can build a website is if you use something known as a funnel builder. I can give you a reference to one, okay, that I use. And we make a lot of sales with this because it's affordable. It's $25 a month and you can make any website you want. And if you want to utilize your Facebook group to use it, that's where you market it as an affiliate to your members in your Facebook group that you admin, okay? So yeah. That's okay. It's a good question. ChatGPT, you can use to create ideas and topics on things that you want to provide as value into your Facebook group. Yes. Yes, Delroy, it's called the Internet Marketing Pros. Let me let me um, put it here for you so you pretty much know how to join it. Facebook.com groups, the Internet Marketing Pros. We're actually live in there right now, guys. So we got new members that want to come in and join. Just make sure you actually answer those three questions, okay? It makes it a lot easier for me to determine if you're right for the group or not. We do disqualify people. We don't want just anybody in the group. Um, I always use Vistaprint to make my website. Why are you using Vistaprint? I don't use Vistaprint to make my websites. I use my funnel builder, $25 a month. I'm supposed to use it. If you use Vistaprint, are you paying for that or are you using it for free? Yeah, be careful what you're using to create your websites. I know there's Wix, like, what is it called? Wix? <laughs> Wix, right? It's Wix, isn't it? Yeah, I don't like their templates. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I just don't. It, to me, it's not really great. I like a funnel builder that is versatile and I can create capture pages, sales pages, video bridge pages, websites, e-commerce, shopping, Shopify, and connect my account with it. Like you've got versatility then, and for $25 a month, it's much better. Uh, Brian Beard says, the count don't use Vistaprint. <laughs> no Vistaprint, no. Definitely you don't want to use Vistaprint to create your website. Maybe you used it because you thought that's what works, but uh, no, Richard, you need a funnel builder. 
Yep. Yep. You definitely need a funnel builder. I think we shared one before here for you, but if you like, I'm going to grab that link and I'm going to put it right here in case you guys want to check it out on the replay. And when we, when I finish up with the hot seat, which is right here in a few minutes. Um, and I like for you to actually go to that site and you can actually join it. Let me just get that real quick. It's design your nine to five.com. Let's make sure my domain name's working. I always got to test before I give it to you guys. Make sure you guys don't end up nowhere else, right? Design your nine to five.com. Let me put that in the chat for you guys. That is our domain. Here we go. Design your nine to five, which is what you can do. <laughs> Design your nine to five.com. You want to go to that website and uh, take a look at it. Definitely want to make sure that you uh, visit that website, design your nine to five. So that way you could actually take a look at what we have. It is a great funnel builder. It is versatile, like I was saying, and you can create unlimited pages as long as you got your own domain name. Yes. $45 a, a, a year for Vistaprint. Okay. Vistaprint is only $5 to make my own website. And do you have any traffic to it right now? Because if the answer is no, then I would get your $45 back or whatever it is that you're still paying. All you're doing is just wasting money. You got you to build, you, you build it up, man. You can't, you can't just use that. I highly recommend get a funnel builder. You're going to have a lot more versatility. And you know what? It's duplicatable. It's duplicatable when you're building out your team too. Absolutely. All right. My goodness. Design your nine to five.com. That was the website. According to Facebook, they did not want me to put any links in the comments. There they go again, becoming Darth Vader, Darth Zuckerberg. Yeah, he is certain links that they actually can accept and they don't like it. So he actually took it out. See how fast they are. Anybody seen this lately? You post something in, the, in your, in your, in your own Facebook group or on your timeline, you're in the comments. It's your page and Facebook's all over it, up in your pockets. You know what I mean? Literally. That's wrong, Facebook. You suck. <laughs> That's wrong, man. You know? Whose wall is it anyway, Mark? <laughs> right? Let's talk about this is my profile, my timeline. Yeah, if they're watching you and censoring you and you can't do certain things, that's BS. That is such BS, isn't it? I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> Definitely. I know I'm not the only one. They like to censor you. I'm like, wait a minute. Mark Zuckerberg, whose timeline is it? This is your timeline, but I have to put my presence on here, my work, all my value, all my content, and you want to censor me? I don't think so. <laughs> I got people laughing. Okay, let's make this easy for you guys. Yeah, there you go. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's a domain name right there. Instead of design your 95 cents, obviously Mark Zuckerberg and his community doesn't like it. I put my domain there. I have another alternative domain name. You guys can go right there. That's going to take you to the product that I market, me and Rich. It's our funnel builder for $25 a month. It's versatile. You can create all kinds of things there, capture pages, sales pages, bridge pages. You can have, uh, like Sharon Curtis said, she wants to build a website. You can build websites. You can have your own online store, e-commerce. It's very versatile. Just make sure that you join it and you actually participate in the training to learn how to use it. That's what I highly recommend. <laughs> Kali said that was dang quick. <laughs> I'm pretty fast. <laughs> yep, that's how they are, man. They, they are so quick. They don't care. They do not care. They do not care, man. I'm telling you. Oh, my goodness. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for asking all these amazing, great questions. Sarah, Joyce, Taylor, Sean, Raymond. Thank you so much. Colleen, Richard. I mean, there's so many names. I can't even, I can't keep up, right? You guys are awesome. Thank you so, so much. And guys, join us on the next hot seat. Hopefully, Rich will be here. I'm pretty sure he will be. Okay, next hot seat, we're going to be live again, answering your awesome, amazing hot seat type questions and getting you guys broke through the chains that are holding you back 
for having success. My name is Ace Guzman, guys, and I'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend. Take care. Thank you for the thoughts and prayers for Rich. All right, you guys. Bye now.